Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in on today's video where we are looking closely into the models regarding a possible record breaking high pressure for February as well as the current weather warnings which have been issued by the Met Office. So from today we've got Storm Herminia moving through which is currently centred across the Midlands and this will be tracking further east throughout today bringing showers across England with a possible rumble of thunder for parts of southern England as well. Possible showers also pepping up across Scotland too, but those will also clear by tonight. And the majority of the heavy showers, which have produced some lightning strikes this morning, are now moving further east too. So if we have a look at the Met Office weather warnings, and we have currently got a yellow rain warning part of South Wales, where Places seeing as much as 40 millimetres of rain, further 20 to 30 millimetres, and very isolated totals of 50 to 60 millimetres are expected through Monday and Tuesday before rain and showers showers finally begin to ease. And this warning has a medium likelihood and a low impact. And that's just what I highlighted a minute ago of how that low pressure centred here. All the showers wrapping around it like this will slowly fade away further east by tonight. So if we have a look at the UKV, and as you can see we've got that storm Herminia moving through here, if we quickly look at the pressure, as you can see that low is centred there and that will gradually move further east by tonight, and as you can see it moves just off the coast of East Anglia, and so will the showers too, which is why we're seeing less showers and that will develop. Uh, if we move through Wednesday, we have got a possible channel low pepping up, which could bring some heavy rainfall totals to parts of southern England, which has already seen quite heavy rainfall totals. So depending on how far north this is, we could also see another Met Office rain warning. But however, this is trended further south throughout last night and yesterday, so the risk is diminishing from this. So we could actually end up with all this rain up here slightly further south down here and completely miss the completely miss southern england but however coastal regions at the moment are currently at risk of seeing this heavy rainfall and if we move through we've got that rain still pepping up into parts of southeastern england throughout wednesday night which continues into the early hours of wednesday which will clear by wednesday no thursday morning sorry and then friday we have got a occluded front trying to push into Scotland, which could give some snow to parts of the hills, mountains of Scotland, and possibly towards North England as well. But don't expect really anything from low line levels, because I don't think it is really cold enough, but we'll have a look at that in a minute. And as you can see, this will move further east. Throughout Friday, we bring some heavy rain again for parts of southern and southeastern England during the course of Friday. As well as we do also see a possible occluded front again, try to pick up Sunday, but we have got a kind of battleground scenario going on Sunday, starting February, because we've got high pressures trying to introduce milder and clearer and drier spells for the United Kingdom. But we could also see where this occluded front is. We could also see a possible threat of more severe weather where we see 40 to 60 miles per hour gusts within those torrential school line which we call it as well as a possible tornadic feature but however this is seen as a low risk at the moment so we're not really going to focus on this if we look at the press charts and as you can see we've got that occluded front trying to trickle in across parts of southwest england but we've also got high pressure starting to develop across parts of france moving up towards us as well as also some signs down just in the north atlantic and if we have a look at the 850 HPA temperatures, we see that low pressure bringing some more warmer spells than what was previously we had, which is why we're getting that feed of those showers. Actually, more colder spells, and we have those warmer sea level temperatures, which is why we're seeing this feed of showers. Sorry, error made there. And then once that low pressure clears, we go into a more colder air mass. Which, so we could actually see 
depending on how much this cold air sticks and how far if we see a a what's the word an underlap i think it is called an underlap of the more warmer weather below the cold air we could see more rain to low lying levels across scotland but depending on how far and how strong this cold air keeps in place we could maybe see a wintry mix to low lying levels but nothing really expected from this and then another warm front tries to move in across sunday which actually looks like a cold front but that won't really make much further than that and if we look at the two minimum temperatures on night time we can see that temperatures are going to drop widely across south of ireland as well as england but majority of england are going to stay above anywhere from two to four degrees and wednesday we're going to stay into the eight degrees seven degrees and six degrees whereas scotland staying below sub-zero and then the course of wednesday night and thursday early hours we could see a widespread frost developing in ireland scotland as well as the midlands but not so much in southern england as we are just keeping above the sub-zero temperatures and then thursday we are going into the anywhere from five to seven degrees temperatures again so same temperatures for the last recent days and then friday night we could see a more widespread frost developing for southern england instead of northern england but parts of eastern parts of the eastern coast scotland we could also see a frost develop there and then friday we are going to get some warmer air moving in so we could see double digits across ireland parts of southwest and southern england with temperatures rising across the midlands and if we go on to friday night temperatures to get rid of this ad <clears throat> we can see that that boundary between warmer air the boundary between warmer air placed here and we've got that cold air placed here where within that cold air boundary we could see a frost develop there as well let me just quickly take a look on sunday as well we've got that warm air trying to move in as well as a cold front sweeping in across parts of ireland already which is why we're seeing cooler temperatures here but this cold front isn't really expected to get any further than that and i did forget to open this app here so if we go on the g this is the gfs on europe and north atlantic if we quickly have a look at the pressure charts so we can see we've got that storm herminia moving through today as well as that channel low developing parts of northeastern france which could bring some heavy rain to parts of southern england and then after that clears we've got high pressure moving in which does actually try to push further north into a scandy high up here which could bring brief easterly wind under this high pressure so we could actually see an underlap of possible colder air when this high redevelops as you see that high redevelops back up and we start to pull in a an easterly wind up here which could actually make temperatures at night quite cold so we could actually see widespread frost with this high pressure as well not reaching record breaking high on this not reaching record breaking pressure on this sorry must i say however it is a quite close on this model but once we look at the next model which i will show you shortly we could see quite a stark difference with this and if we look at the ECM WF model, which did show the record breaking high, we can see that that channel low, which is actually much further south from the ECM WF. So the GFS had it up here and the ECM has it down there. So quite a stark difference on where that is going to be placed. And if we move through, that high pressure starts to build in and becomes starts to try to become a Scandi high, but because all the jet stream up here is going to refire back up and become quite strong, we're going to see low pressure spin up and become quite powerful storms in the North Atlantic. So that won't really affect us, but that will affect this high pressure trying to develop up here and will basically kill it down and make sure that will not develop, which is why a few days ago we saw that we could bring in a, an easterly wind which could bring some cold weather for a time but however this is quickly diminished as 
that Jetstream has really quite picked up on the recent model output. And as you can see, we move in, that, look, that high pressure dies down around the 4th of February. And then the day after, we get quite a strong high pressure, which could actually be quite record breaking, because as you can see, we're into the 1050 there. And this color is really not good to use here. But once again, we're going to expect colder, colder nighttime temperatures with this and drier weather alongside this as well. Unless this clears away, we could see a possible northerly blast across the United Kingdom. But however, because this is so far away, we're not really going to expect this at the moment. So if we take a look at the samples, and as you can see, that high pressure is going, that pressure pressure chart is going to be rapidly rising as Storm Himania moves away. As you can see, pressure level is quite low, 980, and it'll be rapidly rising to around. 1040 possibly even higher than that as well up to the 1050 which would actually be nearing record breaking if not is record breaking pressure charts for united kingdom for this time of month so we have to keep a close eye on that and of course this will bring much drier and warmer spells for the daytime temperatures but however at nighttime temperatures we can see quite widespread frost with this as well and as you can see anything past here really we're expecting majorly nothing at all maybe the odd shower or mist or mug where cloud, cloud does develop but however we're expecting quite a dry spell with this so for february we're expecting high pressure to build in which could die down for a bit where we're pulling an easterly wind possibly but we're keeping a close eye on that but overall we're expecting dry weather and clear skies with nighttime temperatures going below sub-zero quite widely bringing a widespread frost as well so thank you for everyone for watching i hope this video informed you about the upcoming weather for february and i hope you enjoyed and enjoy your rest of your week thank you all and goodbye